Let's do a quick review and see how we set up this really cool simulated controller area network, the simulated car network that uh, runs just like a real network in your own automobile. Um, can Utils and ICSIM made the whole thing possible. We can run a real controller that looks like a PlayStation controller down here uh, to run using either the keyboard or a real USB controller to drive a virtual car. And we can see on the instrument cluster simulator, the IC simulator, the uh, speed, we can see the doors lock and unlock, we can see the signals turned on and off, and then we could even see the network packages that came by and we saw how to capture and replay those. Well, let's go back through how we made that happen. First of all, we had to install a few dependencies. That meant that there were some libraries that this package depended on, the libsdl2 and then sdl2 image. Then we had to get uh, the CAN utils. Those are the controller area network utilities. That's what let us set up that virtual CAN network or the VCAN zero on our uh, Linux computer. Then we used GitHub for the first time. So we used Git to grab some really cool open source software from Zombie Craig. That's Craig Smith and the team at opengarages.org. The IC simulator or the instrument cluster simulator gives us a controller and a dashboard simulator to let us drive a virtual car to practice car hacking safely. Then we didn't have to really compile the IC sim tools using make, we just could CD in and use the dot controls and the dot IC sim uh, folders, uh, files, programs that were already in there. But I'm going to record a bonus section that was really popular in our previous two years of the National Cyber Warrior Academy where we hack the car hacking software and we'll learn to use make to recompile. I'll, I'll do that right after this review lesson here. But we were able to do an ls inside the icsim directory and we saw two new program files, icsim and controls. Then to start our virtual CAN network, anytime you restart your computer, you'll have to reload this VCAN module into your Linux kernel. That's with the mod probe VCAN, and notice that's just VCAN, no VCAN zero there. Just VCAN because we're loading the module that lets us do virtual controller area network simulating on our computer. Then we use dmessage to make sure that it was actually in the uh, kernel uh, history. Um, so we displayed those messages, IP link add dev vcan0 type vcan, that added a new device called vcan0 of type vcan. So we set up a network and then we um, turned or connected to that network or turned it on by saying IP link set up vcan0. We were able to run can sniffer and in the beginning there was nothing running across that network but as soon as we loaded the IC simulator and the controls from our IC sim folder we were able to run a real controller area network simulator and see that traffic flow by. And we could see the uh, packets colored, different colors because of that dash C flag, the red ones had changed and the others were staying the same. And remember we had to use dot slash because we were running these files locally from that one folder. We hadn't added this IC sim to our path yet for our shell. So we were able to do a car replay attack. That's a very common hack on networks and on devices like cars, uh, even your door locks in your home. A replay attack is a pretty common uh, way to test your security. So if you have a Bluetooth lock, you can use a Bluetooth packet sniffer and a wireless device or a laptop computer. And you can listen to those packets as you press your door key unlock, if you have one of those Bluetooth unlocks, or when you uh, send the signal from your cell phone, so if you're using a Bluetooth sniffer, you can sniff just like we used a CAN sniffer to sniff from the CAN network. Then you can replay that and see if it unlocks your front door. Uh, unfortunately, there are some locks that uh, came out early on that you could do that with. Uh, same thing for a garage door opener. In the old days, you could just listen using a simple software-defined radio to uh, somebody press their garage door opener or, uh, your, uh, or your car lock and unlock from your key fob and somebody could replay that same signal and uh, unlock a door, open a garage door, etc. So replay attacks are a really common thing that we like to try and in this case it worked beautifully. We could do everything that we could do from the can dump. So everything we did while we were capturing those packets and logging them with can dump dash elv on vcan0 like pressing the accelerator, unlocking the doors, turning the turn lights, the turn signals on left and right um, all of those things were shown and replayed when we replayed that same packet file on our CAN player. 
So when we did candump-l on vcan0, it created this new file, candump and a long timestamp log. And we just had to replay the capture commands with can player space dash i for an input file, can dump. And notice we didn't have to use vcan0 there because we were replaying on the same network that we recorded it on. If you wanted to record from your vcan0 and play out over one of those serial connections to a car, SL can 0 for example, your serial can, if you plug in a real USB to a can device, then you would just say SL can 0 equals vcan0 so that you could replay what was originally designed or captured on vcan0 over the serial can connection. Well, these are some exciting hacking tools and it's just scratching the surface of car hacking. But if you can understand how to do this, you can do some important things to test your own car and uh, maybe even replay. Uh, whether you want to be able to unlock your doors even when your door locks are not working or the, uh, the control panel on your door is not working, roll down your windows, turn on your stereo, uh, try sniffing and do it responsibly only on a car that you own. Uh, but like I mentioned, we can uh, capture and replay single events. So if your car windows stop working all of a sudden, you can try going to a friend's car that has the same kind of automobile and uh, just capture that signal when you lower the windows and then save that as one dump. Capture that signal when you raise the windows is another, and you can plug into your controller area network using a $20 to $40 cable and your laptop computer, and you can control your windows once again. So uh, some really cool things are possible once you understand how to use this. It won't work on uh, every car the same, and you, you do have to uh, capture the, uh, the traffic so that you can start to understand it, but can dump, can player, and can sniffer will allow you to do that pretty well. Now coming up in this bonus lesson, what I want to do for you is show you a really cool lesson that we did with our students in 2016 and 2017 for the National Cyber Warrior Academy. We uh, are going to hack the car hacking software. We're actually going to remake that ICSIM file and make some edits so that we can take that speedometer instead of just stopping at, uh, I think it stopped at 100 miles per hour, we're going to be able to push that all the way up to 300 miles per hour. We're going to peg it all the way around. So that was a fun lesson, plus it shows some really cool skills with editing some open source software, open, editing the uh, C files that we downloaded from ICSIM from GitHub, and then making using the GNU compiler and the make utility so that we can remake or recompile our car hacking simulation software. So we're going to hack the car hacking software. We'll see that as a bonus lesson coming up next.